let's just run it. GWT dev mode. Let's go. So the observation that a player made would be it'd be nice to export the SFEN uh, of a particular position. Actually, this probably could have helped with troubleshooting the question I had the other day. Um, which was, what is the SFEN representation of the position? Um, I could have helped myself out a bit by solving these issues in some kind of order. But yeah, here we have a shogi problem. Um, and having a way to be able to copy this position um, into a program would be great. So what I'm going to search for is this string play the correct move. As you know, there's only one correct move. Shogi's a game about finding the only correct move. I am joking, in case it's not obvious. Um, but yeah, here we are, safe HTML. So I'm going to add another safe HTML component. Um, to this page. Um, and I need a description for this. I don't want to use SFEN because that's kind of an ugly term to use. Oh, I don't know. HTML. Um, also, I'm not sure that the line break actually makes a difference here. Alright, so then we want to position this somewhere on the screen. So there's this choose HTML that's added on the message panel. Uh, apparently to add a component. Um, let's see. Oh, this is the problem feedback panel. Apparently there's other panels on the screen too. Um, yuck. Hmm. How about instead of play the correct move, let's just print out the text here. Um, and also rename this. So when the next button is clicked, we want to change the text that's on there. Um, hang on. So when they hit the skip button, yeah, fire this in reverse order. Message panel dot that HTML. There's not a clear HTML, is there? Okay, fine. No, I want to just erase that and replace it with this. Skip problem event, and then here we need the actual position. Um, ditto here, we need it. Um, so 
I don't suppose I have visibility to the problem. That would have been too easy, wouldn't it? All right, so this is packaged where? In widget problems. Do any of these things have visibility to the problem somehow? I doubt it. Activate event bus, event bus. Problem options panel, flow panel. On click. Yeah, there's all this event handler binding stuff. Um, so in order to display the text on the screen, I would have to bind an event for it. Okay, yeah, I did remember to share my screen. Good. Um, So there is this something ends up calling display position somewhere. Set position. Um, wait, what? Interesting. This is so weird. Set upper right panel. So that's called once. On position changed. You have a position changed event, set position. So I wonder if the. Um, I wonder how this is bound. Is this just automatically wired somehow? Or does something call this directly? Does this class have to implement some position event change listener interface? No, this only implements click handler. So, event handler. I'm guessing. And this could be an incorrect guess that if I copy this event handler into the problem feedback panel, that maybe somehow um, it would handle the event. Now, granted, we can't call set position. What we can do is um, we can set HTML equal to hello. Oh wait, here we have a user finished problem event. Um, where is this get problem ID consumed from? Oh, going to problem problem ID. Okay, cool. So, um, So 
I didn't need to implement this on position change listener. Um, yeah, this is better. It's not even what I was aiming to do. Um, on user navigated back events. What is a user navigated back event? Like that's the back button, right? really see a purpose to this kind of event. On oh, the Kifu editor panel. Yeah, again, I don't see a purpose to it. Like, what generates a user uh, navigated back event? I'm not seeing its generation. Um, I guess I could search the code base for this term. All right, so yeah, if you are using the previous button or the move to start button, you get that event. Um, which I guess the point is to clear the message that said wrong. Um, let's see, GWT client events. Um, okay, so we've deleted that. And then the event handlers for that can go to. Um, And we don't need to fire events on the event bus for this. And what else? What other problems have I introduced that I need to fix? Okay, my Windows taskbar has decided to overlap my window, so I can't edit. I can't see the bottom part of my screen. We're going to unlock the taskbar and manually... I can't fold it down either. Okay, great. Nothing I can do can force the Windows taskbar into submission. Um, Windows rules all. I have no control. Um, Properties, automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode, on, lock the taskbar on. Where's the never show me the taskbar thing? Like, on a different machine, I've had to do this just to be productive. I've had to move the taskbar to the right. And it takes some getting used to, because, like, nobody in the right mind... I don't know, everybody's accustomed to putting it on the bottom. But, um, and then, well, I'm trying to drag it, but Windows has a mind of its own and resize that for me. So we can lock that on the right now. And it still blocks my view. I don't know if you could see it. One second. Yeah, you can see that. It's clearly in the way, but there's nothing I can do to stop it. Um, but at least now I can see the bottom part of my editor. Um, yeah, 
I don't think this wrong HTML is particularly helpful. Typo in word kifu. Uh, more actions. Let's save Kifu to dictionary. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. I'm surprised. Like, don't I have other problems in this workspace? I guess not. But yeah, it would be great if I could force this thing to be hidden. Show badges on taskbar buttons. Like, what the heck is that? I have no idea. But yeah, this auto hide the task bar just doesn't work. So we'll suffer with it. Um, so yeah, what I was trying to do in fact, yeah, I don't need this correct HTML either. Um, so let's rename this. Um, I know, like, that's super descriptive, isn't it? But it actually works. Um, so you have the game navigator, which no longer has to fire things to the event bus. Here we've got stuff. I want to rename this to message HTML. This used to read, play the correct move. We'll, we'll leave that as a default text, because like this default text doesn't make any more sense or less sense. Um, but yeah, on failure, um, I mean, there's not any need to do anything, really. This feedback panel, right, this implements the user, or this utilizes a user navigated back event, which was imported in this import list, which seemingly auto folded. Um, so if we could just expand that and let me delete the invalid import, that'd be great. Uh, wait. Okay, yeah, we still use the event handler. Uh, Okay, there we go. Um, message panel. How many places is this set HTML called? Oh, it's called appear as well. All right. And then the problem feedback panel. It's called there, there, and it's also called on activate. Um, problem 
problem options panel does delegate some events. The Shogi board panel I shouldn't need to change. The custom survival panel I'm not changing. Yeah, the finished problem event conveys a new problem ID. Um, so we're going to fact yeah, this is Shogi Fen. Um, yeah, there we go. I don't need to keep uh, distributing that string. There we go. Four related problems. So false sume ID. So here I have to provide um, not just the ID of the next position. Um, that's interesting. We haven't even loaded the next problem yet. This might be the wrong place to put the next problem. How did we get the next problem ID if we can't identify the attributes of the next problem? Where did this come from? Set sume ID. Okay, what does the implementation here do? Problem controller set problem ID. Setting problem ID. That's nice. Um, so this problem controller does not itself ensure. Yeah. This is so weird. Did I provide this problem ID in a finished problem event? Because um, I'm starting to think that's not the next problem ID. I think that's the current problem ID. Okay, let's just verify one thing at a time. So can I get an output at all with what I just coded. Uh, to test that, we'll need to build the software and deploy it. So let's refresh this. Our turning to showdown, no announcement there yet. Um, okay, we've built the software. Can we run it? Java, cannot find symbol. That doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> what is Java anyway? Isn't that like coffee? Or is this just a result of an invalid? Yeah, OK. So somehow we built without error. Let's rebuild, and this time yeah, this is still a build success. Maybe there was a build error and I just missed it. Um, yeah, let's try it this time and see if we have valid compiling code. Do we get an error? All right. I think we found our symbols this time. Problems. Alright, so my object here, let's just try to get a different message to print up here. That's all I was trying to do. Um, do I know the solution to this? Like, I have only a handful of problems installed, so I should know them by now. Um, Yes, yeah, so, all right, well, the text changed, or the display changed at any rate. Um, I think an error happened. I'm not sure. Let 
But yeah, this is different. Because instead of... Well, I don't think this takes me to the next problem automatically. Or maybe it tries to and just gets stuck. But yeah, uh, what I have currently coded... We're not in Bioyomi mode. We're just in this problem feedback panel. Um... Hmm. Okay. What text did I get rid of here? Fine. Uh, yeah, put that back in. Uh, let's try that again. Skip to next problem. Yeah, I don't know how... I guess to deploy my changes, I've got to recompile. And then redeploy. So my guess is that this event doesn't do a redisplay, and this event does redisplay things. So, I'm trying to figure out the architecture of this screen. It says play the correct move. So let's maybe for once do that. Um, I've got a rook in hand. It usually means that the rook should be sacrificed. Wow. I feel dumb. So that is a dragon. This is a bishop. It's a pawn. <sighs> so... This puzzle shouldn't be so hard. Well, I didn't rec I didn't pick up three mover. Maybe that wasn't a three mover. Okay, I've seen this one several times already. And each time I'm more embarrassed for not instantly recognizing it. Um I think this is the solution. Bishop takes. There we go. So yeah, I'm missing my text. Um, what other things had I changed here? I mean, I could examine the page, perhaps. Uh, See, like, where's my text gone? Yuck. Finding it's going to be hard because there's a ton of content here. It's possible that what I've done here just breaks things all together. Um, oh, wait. I see what I messed up. 
instead of defining this fixed constant up here, um, yeah, we can't use a constant if we want dynamic content. Um, so to get dynamic content, we do something like this. I guess that static content is still a useful filler for when the page initially loads. But in general, yes, yeah, something more like this. Hang on. All right, and then this from safe constant is what? Yuck. OK, from string. Um, we can do that. I don't know, like, what sort of translation this is supposed to do. <sighs> All right, does this compile? Play the correct move. Let's try. I guess that's not the correct move. Next. Gosh, so many moves are possible. Um, so I see this rook is threatening to hit my lance. Wait, is that a rook? I'm pretty sure this is... Oh man, they took over... I can't highlight the possible moves for this piece, but yeah, no, that's a dragon. Um, so my thought was move this dragon, sacrifice it, and then play a double check with this. I don't see how to do that. If this is a mate in three, I'm curious how it's done. Now, it looks kind of crude, doesn't it? Apparently that's not it. Oh, that's the solution. Allow the lance to be taken and then this check. All right. But yeah, it looks like my event bus is not firing this. We're not firing a user finished problem event. Um, which is really unfortunate. So, whoops, that's not what I meant to find. I'm 
I mean, I should log something instead of changing the UI and waiting for something to happen. Um, how do I log something, just in general? Okay, what's the... Okay, core, client, etc. Sure. So... Constructor success is equal to success uh, problem ID is equal to problem ID. All right, stop and save this and see can I observe these events at all or do they just never happen? And if they do happen, why is my client not registered to receive them? I start every one of these damn things saying this is going to be easy. And by the end, I'm surprised any of the code ever worked. And I guess this is just how software design works in general. It's not any fault of this application. That's just how development is. Problem null. Okay, there we go. Was that so hard? <sighs> My log didn't log. That's delightful. Look, I didn't see this success equals problem ID equals sort of stuff here. Um, So confused. <sighs> I don't know. So somehow this is created with an invalid problem ID. Yeah, I didn't think a user finished problem event would have the ID of the next problem. Well, I'm sorry, no, in problem feedback panel, I'm, I'm mixing things up. Yes, if there were a next problem, we would have the next problem. But, um... There is no next problem, and the reason there is no next problem um, is because we're not playing in Yomi mode. Um, but yeah, I was at least able to change the text on the page. But this usage, if we're not doing a Yomi activity, the creator of this event Um, doesn't have a problem ID to specify. I see. Yeah, that's so weird. Like, I never would have thought uh, the next problem ID would go into a problem event. You'd think there'd be a separate event for that or something. I don't know. Software design's hard. Let's put a game up so you're amused while I uh, take a short break.
終了20秒20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 20秒1 2 3 4 5 6 7 One of the players left.
one drop there would be illegal. Um, a pawn drop could protect the rook, or the dragon, but... Dragon could just step aside. No, but then that would drop the token. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Hopefully they can reconnect. I would like to see their next move. これより病院に入ります。10秒。20秒。1、2、3。So with two knights and a lance in hand, how in the world do you start attacking here? There's got to be some weakness to probe at, but what? I guess what this move says is that we like the position of our silver and that the silver prevents this pawn in the center from moving. 
Sit. Hunt. So we'd rather use the dragon to capture here. And perhaps even start some activity on the seventh file. Um, I'm guessing we're met with pawn drop right now. I mean, what else? Okay. My guess of which square it was being dropped on um, is off by one, but... Um, so now perhaps we see knight takes pawn? Or, okay, yeah, we just save our token. Threatened to take a pawn so we could get our pawn and lance moving. Fine. I guess this position has slowed down a bit. And this token could be useful for preventing a bishop or a rook from entering squares adjacent. Yeah, I guess our knight's in a good spot. No need to move it. Not right now. Oh no, the silver's trapped. Whatever shall we do? But also, this square here is controlled. Sorry, I was trying to point. This square here is controlled more times by uh, Santa than by Gota. So, yeah, the silver can march forward. But instead of marching it forward, you can also just put a lance there. If you're okay with giving a lance for whatever you're going to get for it, which I guess is going to be a silver. But also, maybe the silver is good on the square it's currently on. Oh. So this is saying, yeah, let's keep our silver where it's at. We don't expect the opponent to capture this pawn. Uh, but instead to retreat. And they get to choose which diagonal to retreat to. Um. <laughs> well, I judge. I misjudge the situation. So yeah, on five seven here, something is threatened. Um. We actually allow the capture on 5-7. I guess because our attack is faster? Maybe? What a disagreement. I don't think Gota predicted this. I mean, yeah, they saw it was possible, but... Um, both players are having quite the disagreement over whose attack is faster. Okay. 
20秒Sorry, we'll get back to coding in just a minute. I was just having a lunch break. And then this game got a little too exciting. So Goethe has moved all their pieces away from their castle, except the rook. Sent us trying to stop um, an attack on 3 9. Because if it starts, it's going to be fatal. Well, at least I assume it will be. Maybe it won't. But yeah, if. Um, if somehow there ends up being an attack that forces Sentus King to move forward, that could be dangerous. But yeah, I think uh, um, I think Black read this right. That um, their king's safe and that White's king's in danger. The material difference is just too great. Free pawn. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Every free capture usually ends up losing you a tempo somewhere. But I think it was necessary to take this if you want this dragon to defend across the row. And now um, white gets to choose which piece to attack with. Will it be a metal piece or will it be a pawn? But yeah, I don't think two silvers by themselves are going to break down uh, Black's castle. I think Black starts attacking now. And White's relying on pawns to hold his castle together. The pawns and that hidden rook in the corner. There's going to be a lot of groveling to try to get um, equality here. Well, yeah, this game's dragging on longer than expected. We're seeing some go to be try uh, attempt to be as resourceful as possible, and Senta's just gradually finding chances here. Six, 
but they're being responsible and responsive, so... Eventually, Gota's attack has to run out here, Good right? Job. Like, they have one general in hand, and they control virtually nothing it's... on the opponent's yeah. side of the board, so White's attack has to run out. If Black can just find pieces on which Good to start job. his attack. Okay, there's a fork. I think Gota missed this. Yep, there we go. Or, even if they didn't miss it, um, they underestimated it. Now that they're looking at it, um, yeah, it's bad. Because either both of these golds are falling. I mean, yeah, this silver is defending it, but this can't stay there forever. It's either the base of this castle, which is preventing all backs pieces from coming in from the side, either this collapses, or the head of White's attack collapses. Either way, Black's getting a free general. That was exciting. Um, yeah, let's go back do some coding. Again, I'm not sure like why 81 Dojo can go full screen, but this thing can't. Uh, view, appearance, enter full screen. So yeah, this is a different concept of full screen. Uh, view, appearance, exit full screen. So yeah, that's not the same thing as a Windows full screen. So somehow I can't get rid of the toolbar. Um, so these are my previous testing attempts. Oops. Um, okay, yeah, what's new? What am I being notified about? Um, Wait, what? This said pull request closed. Was it merged or was it closed? Okay, they closed it and merged it differently. Fine. Verify the SHA of downloaded file. That makes sense. Um, I've read that. Try to match the magnitude of these evaluations. Okay, so we have a couple incoming changes which I should merge into my chess engine. Um, so let's get that taken care of. Um, yep. And get status. Oh, that's right, I was troubleshooting. Um, there appears to be an issue um, appears to be a problem where I forget. Okay, are these constants the same as they used to be? Where if one player has no king, such as an anti-chess, uh, the neural network evaluation sometimes crashes. It's non-deterministic, which is just great. Um, Alright, and so this builds... Maybe? Okay, let's comment out this test and this one. And instead, verify, can we build the software um, and maybe pass those tests? And while that's cooking, um, yeah, so I don't have a next problem ID to show if problem ID is never initialized. 
What even sets that here? Oh, set problem ID sets it. Find usages. So Byoyomi activity sets the sume ID. Um, jump to source. All right. Um, so yeah, that's under client activity. So we have also like a puzzle activity, right? Suma activity. And this didn't follow the same pattern as Biomi activity because Biomi activity sets the Sume ID under some circumstance. Um, wait, what? Only one consumer. Get problem request feedback. Okay, fine. Um, on success, an async callback. <sighs> Load Suma. So you think that would be a place to communicate the problem ID to the interface? Um, Request. Um, oh, I see. You can either request a specific problem or a random one. Um, and here. Yeah, let's do that. It's going to require some code changes, but this setter. Is this the same class that I was just looking at a second ago? Oh, I guess, yeah, the point is that when we fire events in Bioyomi activity, and when we fire events in Sume activity, we have visibility to the Sume ID. Okay, fine. Um, hmm, get rob random problem, request random, all right, get, so this is going to return a string, and this is going to return a string, and the way in which these return strings is going to be by forcing these other methods to return. Um, yeah, we're going to force this other method to return a string. And force this other method to return a string. And now we're going to look at the uh, declarations of these. Uh, Um, hang on. Okay, so now I have to find somehow in this code base uh, void get random problem. Not found. All right, we're gonna have to find use or declarations of get random problem with the parenthesis there. So we have public string, we have string. So remote service relative path. Um, where is this declared with a type or return type of void? I don't understand. Okay, we want to find problems service. Apparently that doesn't link to the source. Oh. Wait, what? 
problem service async does not define the corresponding method. More actions. Go to implementations. Yeah, so Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Um, wait, I have not changed this. So this return type needs to remain the same, I think. Yeah, and this return type needs to remain the same. So yeah, we can leave the problem service as is, and instead fix the compile errors elsewhere. I clearly introduced compile errors somewhere, trying to get this to work. Um, let's not have a return type void, or a request, or a request builder. Wait, what? Asynchronous version of return or get random problem must have a return type of given types. Um, hmm, I see. So I need to like have some sort of. Um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so all these code changes I was making to try to return the random summa uh, are no good. Because this is an asynchronous service, and I don't have any control over the synchronicity of that. So instead we have an async callback. Um, Hmm. So somehow I need to ensure that there will be an event, and on that event... How is this different than Byoyami activity? So here we have a set sume ID, which says, okay, so we are going to get a problem request callback. Why is this not an... okay. Um... This is a method implementation that does not override anything. Because here we're not implementing that, we're just... Yeah, I wonder if I do the same thing. First of all, what consumes this callback? Load next problem. This calls get pro random problem with a callback. I see. So if I want to have a callback for SUMA activity, do we have a callback already? Yes, we do. Um, so instead of requesting a random SUMA here, um, yeah, this is how we do it. And this is, is this, does a problem request callback get invoked for every request or just a random SUME request? I'm not sure. Um, but either way, either we get a null for the request or we got a problem and let's see, set SUME ID. We do call this. I was confused. So this result that get wait what? What is result?
Um, but yeah, this is actually. This is the correct way to set the SUMIT ID for the page. After having done this, we fire a new game tree event. We probably should fire some other kind of event here too to display something on the page. Um, Hmm, so Biomi activity does the following. It also fires a game <clears throat> a game tree changed event. Are game tree changed events consumed in the UI? I doubt it. Um, are they consumed anywhere? They are consumed by a game navigator, which calls fire position ch fire position changed, um, which just includes a flag for whether the user triggered this. Oh, but then yeah, there's a position changed event, which includes the. A thing of type P, and a P is some kind of position. So this is a generic navigation thing, but if we're talking about a shogi position, shogi position does not contain um, the ID of the position of the game. This is just a position. So um, backing up. This P does not include any information about the game ID. So the position changed event is inadequate unless I construct it and also provide um, what do I need to provide? The new ID if I want to display it. But if my goal is just to display the SFEN, then yeah, I think I'm fine. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, right, so this it changes the URL. I get that. Um, what else consumes this position changed event? Openings activity. So, yeah, I need to add a similar event handler inside uh, one of these other panels. Not the statistics panel, not the game navigator. I don't think it, well, maybe the problem feedback panel. It seems hokey to do it here. We want to put this rather in Summa Activity. So your Summa Activity currently, well, there's an on stop, there's an on failure, there's an init timer, uh, on skipped problem, on stop. So, how about on um, position changed? So this would precede everything else. Uh, and I don't really care if it's triggered by the user or not. Well, actually, I kind of do. So if the event is not triggered by the user, then here I want to change that label.
except here I don't have visibility to the label. What does this thing do? Calls load sume. What does load sume ever do for us? Oh, just this requests a sume. This doesn't actually load one. Um, this is misnamed. Wait, actually, fine. This is okay. This initiates the request. Um, yeah, this is overly complicated. This, uh, we have way more levels of abstraction than are necessary here. So request a random problem. Request a random problem with a specified number of move. Well, I don't want to touch any of that either. Because I have refactoring in place for some of that too. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe this is not the right place to put the logic after all. Because if my purpose is just to take one event and convert it into a different event type, that's not particularly great. Uh, okay, what are all the files I have under revision right now? Or modified? Um, so the problem feedback panel. Yeah, let's just go to the problem options. Well, that's not always displaying. change is not triggered by the user, then we want to set the text on the message panel dynamically. too many parentheses here. I can't count. One there, one there, one there. I think that's enough. Do we need another? I can't count. Yeah, okay, we need four for that to match up. Um, and our standard here is like that. Fine. Um, problem feedback position changed. All right, there we go. So this is never used, it says. So why are these other things used, but this one is not used? I'm confused. I didn't add this, and yet, like, it was there already. <sighs> so... Whatever. Optimize imports. Now what's this for? I'm not sure why I have a warning on event handler. Just code style settings. 
Wrapping in braces. I don't know. Um, okay, let's try to compile this if I'm not already running. Am I running? No. Compile. And go over here. With any fortune whatsoever, um, then maybe we'll be able to test this. There it is. Yuck. But hey, it's a message. Um, now the next question is how to pretty print it, but you know, one thing at a time. All right, so the next thing is um, can I do a convert from string without a break? I don't know. Hey, yeah, getting this text in there is better than nothing. Um, yeah, this is a GWT provided method, so that's good. Um, HTML text no line break. Is there like a no BR element? Yes. So there we go. So this would escape any HTML characters I were to put into this. So instead of that, um, it's not really a save constant, but Wait, there's a from trusted string? What's this supposed to be? Safe HTML string of S. HTML null. Okay, whatever. Um, seems weird to have two ways to specify that. Um, no br plus this converted string plus uh, end of no br. Um, let's see, HTML is going to be equal to this big expression here. Now, wait, what? Oh, yeah, change the type to safe HTML. Fine, whatever. Um, looks a bit silly that way. What's the parameter here? It's just named S. I was just going to copy the parameter name, but I don't like S as a parameter name. Um, okay, and then the interface here is safe HTML. Fine. Um, so yeah, we're going to demand no line break in the middle of that. And now the fun part is once we get this working, we get it working on both panels. In fact, why don't I shoot for the moon here? and just copy this directly from problem feedback panel into Biyomi panel. And uh, just hope against all hope that this works. Um,
Okay, so initially this text is set to choose HTML, which, uh, fine. Did I change that in Bioyomi activity as well? Wait, this is a different class. I have too many things open. Did I change this in, not in Game Navigator. Um, yeah, here's our other pass. Problem f uh, panel. Problem feedback. So, message HTML. Let's rename that back. Okay, so this now retains its old name. Wait, what? HTML, save HTML utils and did a line break here. Yep, so let's roll back the lines and then realize we don't need these three. Um, so now our diff shows up the way we expected. Um, Oh right, and this import doesn't need to be added. So this file's also not edited anymore, so let's recompile and observe whether in Bioyomi survival mode do we in fact see a description of the problem. Wouldn't it be nice if things worked the first time? our description. And so then we can copy this into Shogi GUI and paste it. <laughs> All right. Uh, perhaps this doesn't support that notation. Uh, So is this a valid problem description? I don't know. If I just take this much and I paste it in, is that valid? Yeah, that's valid. Um, with the B at the end, that's also valid. Um, how about with four golds in hand? Is this considered valid? Four golds up there, right? Four knights. Okay, good. 21 lances? No, two lances. Alright, 16 pawns. Okay, 16 pawns is not valid. Um, how about one pawn? So I can take all of this and create a position out of it. No. Okay, yeah, it is valid if you don't include the trailing line. Why is there a trailing line? I'm not sure. Inspect. Yeah, there's no trailing line inside this tag. Um, so if I copy that into Notepad again. Okay, if I just take this line by itself. Here I'm on line 5, and I paste. I get a blank. I get no blank line after my paste. Okay, yeah, this is valid. 
So I must have inserted the blank line when I was pasting. All right, it's not beautiful, but it's there. We did what was asked. And we can go to problems view and see, yep, it's there too. Um, as for what's the right way to show it, heck if I know. Um, so next, we validated that that uh, notation represents a valid position. Um, I think I want to move this feedback from um, the two panels. I put it on to the other two panels. So let's do that. So to do that, let's copy this. Uh, problem feedback panel, put on problems options panel. Uh, on click and activate. And here on position changed. And so <clears throat> um, that means that we'll need a message panel. Well, I have other changes that are ongoing in this panel. Yeah, let's leave this panel as is. Okay, instead of doing what I... <coughs> pardon me. Uh, let's roll this back. And yeah, let's roll back both of these. I've got what I changed in my buffer. Um, there we go. Problem feedback, position changed. And then we can copy the same into Buyomi feedback. Um, Wait, this is the BOME feedback panel. This is the panel on the left. It does say play the correct move. But doesn't also the... Well, no, that's the progress panel that shows... Wow. Yeah, not the greatest set of names ever. Not the easiest to understand set of names in any event. Um, wow, problem feedback, problem feedback, fine. Um, yeah, I think I also want to remove this and just say unconditionally uh, dump out the position like that. If we get events, we might as well do something with their output. If we receive events, we might as well present their contents. Um, so in addition to this message panel and summary panel, Let's have a position panel. Wait, what? Why can I not have that? Okay. Um, let's get a message panel, get a summary panel. Um, Going to go above the summary panel now that I think about it. So we got a message panel, it looks like this. And this is going to be our position panel. And initially, we're not going to set any HTML in it. 
Or we could, well, yeah, we don't need to. And then down here, instead of targeting the message panel, let's target the position panel. And this should be good enough. Uh, So is this summary panel hidden at some points? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Um, oh, here it's hidden. I see. <sighs> All right, and then initially I wonder, does this safe HTML utils thing have a constant for yeah, empty safe HTML? There we go. Easy. Um, well, I don't need to zero it out here. The summary panel. Um, Maybe we want to zero this out. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, you know, why invent a new technique when we have one that works? Why invent a new technique? There we go. That works. I wonder, is this a summary panel initially hidden up here? No. Okay. Uh, interesting. Okay, we still have one problem on this panel. Cannot resolve the navigated back event. That's because there isn't a navigated back event. Um, yeah, now this is suggesting these constants could be final, and they should be final because we don't change them. Um, private field event bus is assigned but never accessed. Well, that's curious now, isn't it? Whatever. I, that's fine by me. All right. Um, so I want to copy these same changes into um, problem feedback panel. So we're going to have all those buttons, sure. We have our message panel. OK, we called it the same thing in both cases. And after that's been added, we're going to add our position panel, uh, which needs to be added. Right. Um, Two can't resolve the user navigated back event because I removed that class. These constants can actually be constant. Good enough. Um, uh, on position changed. So this is going to be position panel set HTML set visible true. Um, and then between iterations we're going to hide it. Like this. On activate. I mean I assume we're only calling this once anyway but
Yeah, that's just an initializer, so... Whatever. Um, yeah, it still makes sense to do all the initialization stuff there. Okay, I think this should present a workable user experience. It's not the ideal way I would have dreamt of displaying this information, however, um, it functions. And my code's open source, and I could be stubborn and wait for somebody else to fix this to make it look all pretty. Um, because probably there's a better way to design the UI than what I've imagined. What I imagined was that you'd show the SFEN in the lower left corner, um, just below the diagram. Wait, what? Oh. We have two contiguous blocks here, don't we? Did I really do that? Um... Are these two independent blocks, or are they part of the same component? No, these are separate divs. It's just, you can't really tell that by looking at it. Because um, there's no space in between them. I'm not a fan, but also like I would have preferred to show it in the lower left corner below the thing and redraw the entire page and I just care that this functions. Now when I go next and previous in here, okay yeah, that does get updated. So it's not super beautiful. And likewise when I go over here and manage to find one correct move. Um, yeah, so then we get this update position black to move again. And then we get this correct label. Alright. Um, and then if I can keep guessing moves correctly, that'd be ideal. <laughs> what are the odds of that happening? Not good. So... Oh, that's a rook. Shit. Why is this not mating one? Oh, because that's not a promotion if I go there. Um. How do I checkmate here? We got the nice correct label showing, but other stuff's missing. So we get a nice wrong label there. Okay, we saw this problem a minute ago, and I've already forgotten the answer. Um, that was this check. And so we could see, does this mirror the position we're currently looking at? I have no idea. Uh, I'd have to put this into Shogi GUI to see how close this is. All right. Um, oh, wow, I can actually select the text. So there is a trailing character. The fuck is this trailing character doing here? Inspect. No BR. 
And then there's the end no br tag. Okay, I don't know like why there's when I do this selection. And then no, not that. And then I go open notepad. I get a new line. It's like this is part of the representation that's in the database, and I just need to trim this, I think. Uh, process terminated. So... Ah, so, so, so... To SFEN. Please tell me there's not a line terminator at the end of this. Re should we include the move count? Return result plus space plus C. Um, C is color to move, I think. Oh wait, C is just um, the pieces in hand. Okay. Um, but yeah, this asks a question, should we return the move count? I don't know, I didn't see anything in the issue tracker about move count. Is move count part of this? Here's an example. Um, I don't like that the example fails to include a move count. This is Wikipedia. So I was attempting to be lazy and suggest that if Wikipedia has this information, I don't need to research further, and I could just say, yes, absolutely, we should include a move count. Um, since uh, Wikipedia failed us, uh, yeah, we should include a move count, because Mueller says we should. And generally speaking, he knows what he's talking about. So we're going to add a move count to this. Um, and we're going to say the move count is 1. Because I don't have the move count. Or do I? We've got a shogi board state. We've got all kinds of stuff, but we don't have a move count. Um. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I go too far. Um. Let me try one thing here. Okay, yeah. Shogi GUI supports a move count. Um. Whether or not it does everything with that. I don't know, but it at least tolerates there being a value there. Um, so a shogi position doesn't include the move count. Um, since let's see, turn to Sven. Position comma one. Okay, let's rename that. Good enough for me. 
Yeah, that answers the question. Should we include a move count? It's there now. No need to think about it further. We've got a move count. Is it accurate? No, but it's there. Um, Oh, hang on. I could take this opportunity. Well, no, let's not tackle everything at once. Um, no, this is actually the right place to put it. Um, board stake sent it to play. Um, private int move count. So. Move count is equal to zero. <sighs> yep. Now, why are there two constructors like this? What's so special here? Um, Man, Java never makes anything easy. But anyway, this zero senta to play. Shogi word state senta comma die go to comma die. Fine. Now, what do you do in this other constructor? Really, we should just fan in like this. Shogi board state should be constructed this way. And sent out to play should, I guess we're assuming true. Sure, why not? Um, The call must be the final, or the first statement in the constructor body, and now it is. So good enough, uh, I think. Um, so now I want to deprecate this constructor here. Now, it's quite possible that center to play should be determined by the move count. Um, like, yes, you would, I would think that uh, center always moves first, by definition. <laughs> um, yeah, so in fact, well, this is disgusting, isn't it? Set center to play. No, absolutely do not do this. Um, uh, public void set move count. Um, this dot move count is equal to move count like that. I know normally we would give method declaration, uh, method definitions a separate line, but this is a really trivial setter. Um, uh, hang on. Hang on. Future work. Santa always moves first. Uh, move count equals zero. If move count mod two equals zero, it is Santa's turn.
unless like there's some overriding definition here like what do we call this the move count we're using the shogi convention for move counting which is that we count what international players would call plies or half moves the move count field is optional program should be able to etc so i am mistaken the move count um, it should default to one. That's not a counter of how many moves there have been. It is just the move count. And it's forever increasing, or monotonically increasing. Um, find usages of this thing. Oh, from SFIN is the only consumer. All right. Well, we're just going to cannibalize this then. And declare that new shogi positions always have a move count like that. Um, hang on. So next we're going to declare int move count is equal to 1. And if it's Go to this turn, then move count is equal to two. Um, that's how we resolve it. Um, so validate captured pieces. And I guess beyond all this, so it's not equal to a dash, do all the following. Oh, hang on. So now there's fields. Um, so if there is a fourth field, um, then that's the move count. If fields.length is greater than two, um, move count is equal to integer dot parse int of fields at index 3. There we go. Good enough. Um, So this starts from one. So all this got embedded into shogi position. Um, and then two Sven. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm gonna collide with my other coding change that I already have submitted. That's too bad. There's gonna be a merge conflict eventually. Um, but yeah, this two Sven definition will include at some point uh, the move count, which is going to be included in the shogi positions. So I don't need to include it separately. Uh, there we go. We got the problem feedback. Okay, did I break something? I had started to add a new function here for two Sven. And um, I had started to change one of its consumers. And now I no longer need to do that. Um, so does everything in this project compile? Um, well, I don't see any errors. Can we run this in dev mode? There 
there's a block of text and it's missing the trailing one. Um, it's missing the trailing digit. I'm not seeing how that's possible. It's as if my changes didn't compile. Wait, this is in Play Shogi Library Shogi. So I have to go rebuild Play Shogi Library Shogi if I want my change to be there. Plugins. Install. No, I don't want to invoke a particular plugin. I just want to perform the installation. Okay, this failed. There are test failures. Nice. Um, run all tests. Comparison failure. USF format test. Ah, so. Wait. Cert equals. Yeah, this needs to have a one at the end. Wait, what? Wait, this has a B and then a hyphen and then the colon. This needs to have a hyphen and then a one there. Technically, this doesn't require the one. It could be read with or without that digit. But it does tolerate the incoming digit. OK. That's compiled. Let's build the software here and then run it in dev mode. Wow, I'm looking at the clock, seeing what time of day it is, and realized, oh wait, I started my stream super early today. And that could explain why it's not like 8 p.m. Um, all right, so now does this block of text. Uh, yeah, previously, well, that's a different position. We still have a trailing space. There's still jack that I can do about that. Somehow that's getting added, but um, if I open Shogi GUI and paste it. There we go. So, yeah, I don't know like why selecting all the text here. Like we have a no break and an end no break tag. I'm not asking for a new line to be inserted. And yet, somehow, there is a new line character between this and the end of the div tag. Um, how does this look for the first tag? Inspect, div, play the correct move, break, div. Like there, at least I see where the line break's coming from, although it's not necessary. Um, at least I don't think it's necessary. I didn't change it, is my point, and I'm not changing it. You can't make me. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. Um, regardless, we've got it to print out. That was the object. We've succeeded at the object. Um, Is there a way I can commit changes to avoid colliding with my other changes that are in progress? I don't know. 
I mean, either yes or no is the answer. <laughs> um, I want all my changes to be present in the code base somehow. But also, well, I could resolve the merge conflict if and when it appears. Otherwise, yeah, let's just submit everything as is. I'll let the maintainer figure out what they want to do with the changes. Um, so, what are we looking at now? Did I have my issue open? At one point I did. Uh, GitHub notifications. We'll come back to that in a second. Play Shogi. Issues. Ah, requests this. Um, adding an appropriate button in the UI. Whatever. You want to add a button, you add a button. I'm adding a text field. I'll leave it to you guys to figure out how to present it. Um, okay, so... Let's see, source, git... Uh, commit directory... Suspend converter, shogi position, USF format test. Those have to go. Uh, Suma importer no. Biomi activity, Biomi feedback panel. Game navigator, what did I change here? Oh, yeah, I removed an event type. Um, Kifu editor panel. Yeah, let's let's open this. Okay, apparently I have it open on the right here. Um, can I just edit the file, please? Is there a, a option to open the file? File path. Ah, so to access the key foo, it, I'm just, the only reason I'm so disappointed is because this tool is already fantastic, and so, like, when there are things it could do better, I, I just wish it were better. Um, my expectations are already too high. I can't even spell choose. That's great. Chas. Chose. Choose. There we go. Um, yes, yeah, so let's go back now to this perspective. And I think I want the Kifu editor panel because I scrapped stuff that didn't need to be there. Yep. Um. Problem feedback panel. What did I change here? Oh, okay, yeah, this is. You're just doing sumo solving. Alright, um. Sumo importer. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm still on the wrong branch. I want to switch branches before I do this. So. Pull a fast one on my IDE, git, repository, branches, new branch, need to give it a name, uh, sume x, uh, sfen export, uh, no, uh, yeah, export, fine, I don't care. And then we're going to say uh, display suma sfen 
Um, yeah. Um, what are the two modes called again? And problems and yo yo me modes. Uh, all right. Except let's. Yep, there we go. Um, I know you asked for a button. I'm not giving you a button. If you want a button, make a button. How do you? Okay, you didn't put a hyphen here. I'll take my hyphen out, just for you. Um, okay, so to commit and push this, I actually need to move the whole window. I still can't resize this vertically. Where's my vert Here's my vertical resize. So if I want to resize this vertically and horizontally, I've got to grab it somewhere like there. And then move this so that I can access this pop up button down here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Push. And we'll see in a second if I forgot anything. Uh, one thing I forgot. Um, is that I wanted to, well I wanted to link to the problem number here um, let's see somebody else wants to change this into a button, that's fine. Amend, commit, and push. Wait, I cannot access the button. Control-Alt-K. Oh. Okay, now can I access the button? No. Why you no let me access button? Alright, do I have to make another change or something for this to be acceptable? I don't understand why I would. Oh, here's a change though. Yeah, we actually deleted a thing. Um... Force push, force push. So now, hopefully, our change appears here. Um, and then we can pull request this into upstream repo. Um, I know some editors um, collapse them. Um, there we go. This patch displays the SVN. If you want a button, um, feel free to. Uh, if you want to, uh, let's see, feel free to change this code to, feel free to change the way this information is conveyed. For example, a button or displaying or moving this to the lower left corner. Um, uh, 
uh, let's display the move count of one. Um, since Shogi GUI accepts it, um, and since chess problems generally start um, with a move, um, and since chess, and since solutions to chess problems uh, are generally indic well, and since solutions um, start with a move count of one. Uh, since printed solutions, uh, Let's see. Historically, just uh, problem solutions are printed with a move count of one, or from a move count of one. There we go. Hit pull request. So, there we go. Good enough for me. Let's check how this looks in this perspective. Um, and let's also check out what's new. Oh, there's a new Kotlin release, a new JVM version of the Kotlin compiler. Uh, so the new Kotlin native compiler, version 1.4. Try a way to generate JVM default method bodies in interfaces delegating to default impulse. Introduce Kotlin nothing value exception and throw it instead of NPE on expressions of type nothing. Uh, support suspend convention on callable references in JVM backend. Or suspend conversion on callables. Well, that's. Um, that sounds interesting. Cleaning stuff up sounds quite useful. Or those are new features, but it sounds like it could cause uh, less wasteful resource consumption. Um, yeah, a number of fixes for stuff that I didn't even know about. All right, nice. So Kotlin 1.4 is out. Um, there's the Combuscan engine for chess, which is in some special language. Um, let's see, I forget what language this was in. Is this Rust? Um, oh, here it is. Go. That's why I found this cool. It's because it was not in like C or C++ or Java. Like this isn't a language that hypothetically, if I needed a engine in this language, I'd be able to go here and find it. So that's what I found so compelling about this but also uh, demonstrates just the versatility of the language. So nice, well done. Um, let's check out if my code has indeed compiled on GitHub. Yes, successful. One minute, 20 seconds to do everything here. Uh, 38 seconds of which is building uh, the web application. All right, so now for real, for real, um, I think these things are <laughs> the only thing I think I'm interested in this point, not necessarily making the website internationalizable, but um, so even though I have like my own copy of this site, there's also this database. And this database is an opening database. And it'd be nice if I could like readily observe the player names here. I don't so much care one way or the other about how these moves are printed, but being able to read the player names 
would give me a better appreciation for who's playing. Um, and I could become more familiar with some players, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's coding. Isn't coding exciting? I didn't promise you that it would be more fun than watching paint dry, but maybe it was. Alright, so yeah. Um, that's the show. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.